everybody and welcome to one player we're back today in the sweet city of london we were heading we were on our way to number two southwest to see langdale pike who is a social colonist to keep you up to speed we've got how many dead bodies have we got three three dead bodies one burglary one probably guilty man at least of something and that's about it. Let's go check out and see what Langdale Pike knows. So we were at this William Bellamy's fellow's house, and I think you can just about see that dice there. I realize on looking back at the video I took last time that this entire section, uh, and it's even still cut off. Uh, let me just move this. This entire section was cut off, so I'm really sorry. When I was pointing down here, so this is where the robbery took place. This is Vauxhall Bridge where Bobby Fields' body was found, and this is Millbank Prison. So, like, when I say they were close together, I wasn't kidding. Um, they're very, very, very close, but I realised that the entire video was pointing to this, and the camera only went to, like, there. <laughs> so, that's my bad. I'll try to avoid that um, as we go forwards. So... Let's put those informants off to the side. Let's go to 2 Southwest, which we found right here. Regent Street, no less. And let's see what this fella has to say. I mean, I'm not that confident that he's going to have anything interesting, but... <sighs> G. Taubman Goldfire, a strange fellow, Wiggins. Unusually, Langdale Pike is alone. The name of Goldfire has changed our man, usually talkative and outgoing, into an introspective historian. The Goldfire family is old and was used to the highest circles, but risky political decisions have destroyed its reputation and have almost led it to ruin. The father's career within Lord Derby's government was promising, but in the 60s, upon the death of his wife, he withdrew from society. From what I know, the doctor is respected by his peers, but he move in, moves in circles which are rarely in contact with mine, my boy. It's always a pleasure to see you, Langdale. Hmm. So, Goldfire is maybe on the way out. Right, I mean, it sounds like maybe he's like, I don't know, maybe maybe he's, well, he's a doctor and he's not he's not relying on like a trust fund or something, is he? But the gold fine name is in jeopardy. Let's just say, um, some political decisions. His his mother died. I mean, it doesn't really add up to anything particularly interesting, does it? Um, where did Goldfire live? We haven't been to Goldfire's house, have we? We've only been to the place where he was found dead. We've never been to his house. Uh, okay, that that was an oversight. Let's see if he's listed in the directory. Because if he is, then let's go check it out. Um, okay, 67, 67 WC and 46 SE under doctors. Uh, 46 SE, what is that? 46 SE. There's two, so I don't know what that means. 46 SE or 67 WC. Let's just go to both and see what happens. I can't believe it didn't go to his house. Of course we need to go to his house. Clues abound at people's houses. 67 WC is closer to us. I mean, not that it really matters, but, you know, I'm trying to keep it realistic. We're still on day one, apparently, of this investigation. Uh, 67, come on, where are you there? Anglo-Indian? No, I don't, I think we've tried to go there before, haven't we? I think we have tried to go there before. Oh, now I'm totally lost. WC, 67, come on now. No. Uh, nope. So, 46 SE? 46 SE. Let's try that one. Oh, I was... That's Gabilsko. I'm looking for... Mm, I've got the names wrong. I'm looking for Goldfire. Do Goldberg Goldfire. There we go. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I've done that. All right. Probably edit that out. <laughs> 80, <laughs> 82 WC. Of course we already went there because we were looking for Gabilsko and Gabilsko was offended that we called him a murderer or said that he might be. 82 is gotta be somewhere up here there okay can we see that on the map no of course not there we go right up here so this is goldfire's house not gabilsko's house let's go see what we can find at the victim's 
occupancy. 82 Hastings Street. Very good. Oh my gosh, it's a lot. So I will um, I will hold this up again for you. So here we are, 82 WC. It's a very nice street, apparently. And we lie to get in. <laughs> or at least we don't tell his housekeeper that he's dead. So that's a bit messed up. Um, you're going to have to look for another job. And then the room is so cluttered that it seems smaller than it really is. There's a family portrait, a beautiful couple with their two sons, as well as a second young woman and a young man with a heavy mustache. It looks like a younger version of the governess, observes Wiggins. His brains and... Hamburg... Wow, okay. Goodness. All right. Um, you won't believe what I've found up there. What is going on there? So in the attic, we find a or we find a locked door in the uh, up to the attic. It's an armored door. We try to go through, or we do go through, and then it's it's like a prison. Okay, this is interesting, isn't it? So it's like a prison. It's a there's a desk and there's a desk and a bedroom, and a, and essentially another family portrait. In got the same family portrait as is in Goldfire's office, and then the lady says, the governess says, "I should have never let you out of my sight, you miscreants." Her eyes quickly go over the room. Where is question mark? The bar the bars have been pried, but have been set back to give an illusion of solidarity. We have many questions, but the woman's anger doesn't allow us to ask them. <laughs> she chases us to the door with a broom. Interesting. So. This is someone, this is Goldfire's relative. So there's a man, he said there was a man and a woman in the photo. There was two boys and then another young man with a mustache, uh, which I will just draw like that. Um, I'm, maybe, the, I'm guessing the two boys, this is a photo. Um, this is wrong. I'm guessing the two boys is probably Goldfire and his brother, maybe. I don't know if he's got a brother, but, you know. And then maybe the young man is like... Oh, I mean, I'm, I'm just making stuff up. I don't know. Maybe the young man is who's being kept prisoner. Maybe the two, maybe the one of the, the, the... Maybe his brother or whatever it is is being kept prisoner. It seems like he's reading, you know, he's reading about psychopaths or at least reading about brains and other things. So somewhat similar to Goldfire. He has an interest in it. Um... But obviously, gold, it's not Goldfire's room, is it? It definitely isn't Goldfire's room. Um, because the lady wouldn't have asked, where is blank, if because she already knew that Goldfire was out. So, Goldfire's house gives us an interesting, interesting information, but I don't know what we're going to go on, necessarily. Um, and plus, like, where... Where where did the person go when they escaped? It does sound like they escaped. London cab drivers, go find out. Uh, go find. Go to the central carriage depot. It's not far away, actually. Look at that. It's about what? It's a it's a five minute walk to the cab depot. Yeah, all right. I like that. I like those odds. So Hastings Street. Someone escape or you know whoever escapes escapes runs to the cab depot gets on a cab and either leaves town or goes somewhere else, goes to murder someone. Let's see. Um, all right, so we'll put attic, prisoner, <laughs> escape, to cab, question mark? And the cab in 5WC should tell us, hopefully, here we go, look at that. We wait for over an hour in front of the stables for Wiggins to look over the logs of the cab drivers. We watch the beautiful cabs entering and leaving the stables in their unceasing ballet through London. We soon see Wiggins snaking his way through the traffic. I've found some information that should be of interest to us, he says, notepad in hand. Let's go to that cafe and see what we can get out of it. We're sitting around a table, tea and coffee cups around Wiggins' lists. Here's some interesting piece of information from yesterday. Time, 6.15... Hastings Street, 82 Hastings Street, that's Goldfire's address, to Lambeth Road. Tavistock Place to Lambeth Road. Lambeth Road to Eaton Street. 
Elizabeth Street to Baker Street, and then Baker Street to Southampton Row. So obviously, going to Baker Street, that must be Goldfire. He's visiting at 8.30. I think that's about the time that he came in. Does it say? Uh, no. It doesn't say. Does it say? No. But it does say it's night. So, I mean, um, so it could be. So 67, uh, 67 Elizabeth Street is where he came from. And then 76 Southampton Row is where he went to. Um, 67 Elizabeth to Sherlock Holmes, and then Sherlock Holmes to 76 Southampton. Um, I mean, we should also probably look at Lambeth Road. It seems like he met someone there, and then that person left. And how did he get from how did he get from Lambeth Road to Elizabeth Street? I, we have to. I mean, I suppose we we'll have to find where that is. Um, is this Lambeth Street? No, that's 28. No, it's not that. 28. Is it somewhere in here? 28? Have we got a 28? We must have a 28. We've got to have a 28. We can't not have a 28. 22, 25, 24, 23? Where's 26? Or 27 even? I'd be happy with that. 30? 29? Oh! 28, there it is. 28 Farm Street. No, that's not it either. 28... <laughs> I mean, I suppose we could look... No, we could look through there, but that would take way too long. Um, this, I think, is probably the best way to do it. This is Belgrave St. George Drive. No, we're looking for 28 Lambeth Road. 28 Lambeth Road. Oh, that's the lunatic asylum. So he went from his house, okay, on Monday. All right, next page notes, I guess. On Monday... I mean, we're guessing this is Goldfire. Goes from his home at 82 WC to 28, what is this? Southeast, yeah. 28 Southeast, that's his work. Someone comes from Tavistock Place, so we need to figure out who that is. 82 Tavistock. That also goes to Bethlehem and then they meet there for about an hour and a half so this is at 6 15 and then at about 8 they go someone gets sent from someone gets sent from Lambeth to Eton so from Bethlehem to Eton someone goes from Elizabeth which we're gonna have to figure out where that is 67 to Sherlock Holmes and then Sherlock Holmes to 76 Southampton Row so okay theory time right okay hear me out Goldfire or someone guy escapes person escapes from Goldfire's prison goes to place of employment of Dr. Goldfire Dr. Goldfire also goes to his work from this 82 Tavistock place. Then, in about an hour and a half, that, that it takes them to then leave, either... Well, no, they can't be killed because he got sent in a cab. So, they swap. They swap places. Then, someone, one of them... Okay, hold me, hear me out. One of them goes to Eton... One of them go, and then the one that isn't Dr. Goldfire goes, yeah, Dr. Goldfire goes to Eton. Where is that? It's 44. Dr. Goldfire goes to Eton for some reason. The person that isn't Dr. Goldfire, that looks just like him, possibly one of the two boys, maybe twins, goes to Sherlock Holmes and makes up a bunch of weird stuff. And that's why all of the doctors think that it doesn't sound like Dr. Goldfire, because it isn't. Okay, because it isn't, it's not Dr. Goldfire, it's his twin. <laughs> All right, that's what we're going with. That's my latest assumption. I could be entirely wrong. So let's see, from home to work, that makes sense. Where's Tavistock? 82 Tavistock to Bethlehem. 82 Tavistock, 
82. Are you over here? Yeah, it's not, it's not on this one. It's not down here, it's not here, it's not here, and it's not in the middle. So in fact, we can't go to Tavistock to figure out who it was that joined him. Can we go to Eaton Terrace? Is there an easy way to do this? I'm not sure. Um, 41, 44, oh, okay, well, there we go, we got lucky. So that's where whoever, it, I mean, again, theory, that's where Goldfire went. Let's go to Southwest 44 and see what we can find there because I think that is gonna reveal some pretty interesting things, if you ask me. 44 Southwest, aha! 44 Southwest is Ch Sir Charles, pa Sir Halley's address. We've been there before. Eaton Terrace, that's just, that's Sir Charles. So he went right from Bethlehem to Sir Charles to kill him. Oh man, come on. It's Charles, Sir Charles, dead. Remember, deceased. That's how I spelt it last time. He's deceased. So whoever went from Bethlehem to Eaton killed Sir Charles. Oh, oh. Elizabeth, 67. Oh, it's like right next to one another. So why would they, so it's not two people. Who is this 82 Tavistock? There must be, an, there must be a Tavistock on the map. No, it's not that. See, look, okay, so let's move this map again. Um, Cause I'm, I'm, I'm just becoming aware that you might not be able to see what I'm pointing at again. So, Okay, Goldfire goes from his house to Bethlehem. Someone else meets him at Bethlehem. We're not sure who it is, comes from Tavistock. Then he gets a cab from Bethlehem to Eton, which is Sir Charles Halley's house. That's why Goldfire's cane is there, because he left it there. Goldfire's cane. And then he walks, not but Wait, where am I again? <laughs> 44 Eaton is Sir Charles. And then where did he get a... Oh, Elizabeth Street. Did I say 67? Yeah. Oh, he walks like not even a minute. I mean, maybe two minutes to Elizabeth Place. And then gets a cab straight to Sherlock Holmes. After he's done the murder. Oh, Sherlock Holmes has got to have noticed that, hasn't he? I mean, Sherlock Holmes knows... Pr I mean, he, come on. Sherlock Holmes will know if someone's done a murder. So who's this Tavistock fellow? That's what I want to know. Interesting, interesting. Well, we've got at least something that probably puts Goldfire or the person that was escaped from his room at the scene of one of the crimes. Still doesn't really explain why it's linked or how it's linked to Bobby Field. And it doesn't really explain, it doesn't explain how, it, how he came to find Dr. Goldfire dead in the meat locker of the lunatic asylum. Although, again, maybe it's not, I don't know. 82 Tavistock, what is that? Where is that? Where Where can it be? Um, where is that cab place again? Oh, the five, five. Let's just go back there real quick and see if I didn't make a mistake. Five WC, five WC, 82, yeah, 82 Tavistock place. I, I can't find it. Oh, look. Look at this! It's right here. Look! 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 I'm gonna show you the map. I didn't look at this one because I figured, well, it's not obviously not that one because that's Hastings, but it's not. Look, Hastings is on this side of the building, and Tavistock is on this side of the building. So if somebody escaped and ran around the corner, called a cab on Tavistock Place, but Doctor Goldfire didn't need to do that and just went to Hastings. It would be the opposite, I don't know. Hastings went first and then Tavistock, but what, well, one of them at least probably gave chase, right? It sounds like they gave chase. They left five minutes apart. So probably someone escaped and then someone ran after him. Goldfire, you know, someone escaped, Goldfire runs after him, they end up at Bethlehem, and then Bethlehem, and then Goldfire somehow ends up going to Sir Charles's house and killing him. Tavistock. So that is, I mean, it's even more incriminating for Goldfire, really, isn't it? Here's what we need to do. We need to figure out 
who that person is, right? We need to we need to figure out who that person is. It seems like it's a member of his family, right? Because why would he be keeping him? I mean, he's keeping him under lock and key, but he's also kind of keeping him nice. Like he's like you know he's got a nice bed, got a nice desk, got some books to read. So he's not like a proper like you know he's not doesn't seem like he's torturing him or any, in any way. But he's got iron bars on them, so he doesn't want him to get out. But if those two boys are indeed Goldfire and his brother, which would make sense why they both had the family portrait in their room, we need to figure out who it is. Informants. Can we go to like the library or something? That's what we do if you want to find out what you're... Librarian at the London Library. It could be to be consulted for any encyclopedic research. Lawyer. Oh, oh, there you go. Somerset House. Archives of birth, deaths, marriages, and wills to be consulted freely. That is where we're going. 17 WC. At 17 WC, we are going to find Goldfire's family tree. 17, 17, 17. Somerset House. Where you be? I mean, again, I'm, I'm moving the dice, but I don't really need to, do I? Um, as long as we keep track of it. We've got 18 down here. That's the Lyceum. What? Oh, there we are. Somerset House, right on the river. Very nice. Okay, next to Waterloo Bridge. 17 WC. DC. Oh, that's WC. Okay, WC. W's. There it is. Oh, right under where we were. Let's see. We find Wiggins in the vestibule of the Somerset House. He's leaning back on one of the columns which hold the vaulted ceiling, leafing through the pages of his notebook. The sound of our footsteps cause him to look up. I hope you found information useful to solving this case, says Wiggins. I've discovered something useful while checking out the birth certificates. George Torben Goldfire has a twin brother. <laughs> yes! Goldfire has a twin brother, William Torben Goldfire. A twin. Yes. Born on March 20th, 1854. Wiggins reads in his notepad from Agnes Goldfire, born Agnes Engels, and of Walter Goldfire. Both dead, interrupts Billy. Who's, who's Billy? The mother died very young, accidental death, on April 12th, 1866, at the age of 28. The father died on June 10th, 1889, from a heart attack. Anything else, asked Wiggins. The wedding certificate indicates that Agnes Engels and Walter Goldfire were married on June 10th, 1852. Other children, none. Officially declared in any case. Twin. Told you it was a... I told you it was a twin. They were always going to pull the twin card, weren't they? So his parents are dead. That might, I mean, it might play into that why like Goldfire family's name is kind of going down, down going down the tube he's got this twin brother who he has to keep locked up for some reason maybe he's a psychopath or you know some sort of maniac Goldfire twin and let's just write down his birthday 320 1854 so Agnes and Walter were married in 1852 when, when they'd been married for two years they had twins and then 12 years later she died 12 years later she was 16 when she gave birth Jesus is that right she she died at 18 she died 1866 at the age of 28 so that's 12 years after her kids were born 28 minus 12 that is 16. So she she had twins at sixteen, to Walter, who we don't. No, we do know how old he is. Okay, so hold on. Agnes is um, sixteen when they have the kids, and twenty eight at death. And Walter is fifty seven at death. And what's eighty? What's eighty nine minus fifty seven? That's thirty. Thirty two. So he was double her age. Kind of gross, guys. He was thirty two. She was sixteen when they had twins. Then she died, and he lived on to well another twenty years. All right, that's it. We've got to get down to this. No, actually, I don't know what I'm doing. I, I made that. I wanted to really. I wanted to be really serious for a second, um, but I've really got no idea where to go next. We found out all this information. We found out all this information, but we're not really sure what it means. Other than 
it probably it probably wasn't probably was not Goldfire that we met at Sherlock Holmes's apartment. Let's just go back and see if if um if Watson notices anything strange. Um, yeah, look at this. What you've just seen, Wiggins, was a warm gold fire. Back when we were at the faculty, he talked to no one. It's the first time he's talked to me using my actual name. He used to call me Wharton. I'm not important enough to his eyes for him to use my name correctly, but I think that if someone wants to kill him, you can take his word for it. This isn't Goldfire. This isn't Dr. Goldfire. It's his twin. And so his t I think his twin must have killed him at the asylum and then gone to kill Sir Charles Hall, put Goldfire's cane in the... F fire so he's trying to frame he's trying to frame goldfire's he's trying to frame goldfire for sir charles hall's murder right by then putting up a suicide note on goldfire in goldfire's pocket and then he's gone to sherlock holmes and kind of like weave this story of like ah oh, someone's trying to kill me maybe it was hall and that's kind of like trying to like fog up like why we're fog up like what we're supposed to be doing how does this t like how does this tie into the, uh, the the robbery is that just a massive red herring like is there any we, I mean because it sounds like William Bellamy did that and William Bellamy and William wait his name's not wait what's his name his name's not William is it that would be a bit ridiculous Somerset Hall where are we going again 17 WC it is William well, it can't be the same person because Watson would have noticed or Wiggins sorry would have noticed um no well, we all have noticed um all right well you know what i say we've made pretty good progress for part two i think we're on the trail of something pretty interesting here we've got some twins we've got some missed i you know switched identities we've got some i don't know about the murder we haven't made any progress on the robbery at all really in this episode but i think we found out enough to keep us moving along in the right direction. I think we need to check out next, probably the books on William Goldfire's desk in his prison, which I imagine we were, imagine, or we were guessing is his prison. I wanna know, I, I don't remember, but well, let's go back and find out who, the, who wrote the books and where he got his like, you know, where he got his ideas from. Maybe that'll tell us like what he, where, where he's coming from or like what he's trying to get at. I mean, I'm not really sure, but there is a, oh, there's another mention, of course, there is, there's another mention of subconscious criminal brains in the paper, yes. Okay, this is where we're going next. Episode three, Professor Morris Benedict. That's what we're doing. That's where we're going. We're going to see the Viennese doctor um, to figure out what William Goldfire thought he knew and what Goldfire was maybe trying to prevent. That is going to be it from me. Gosh, I, I think this game's great. It's like a choose-your-own-adventure, except you, you're basically just like, well, you're still turning pages, but you're kind of, I don't know, it's, it's like come to life almost. I think it's brilliant. Let me know in the comments if you want to see anything else. What am I doing wrong? Have you got any ideas, any clues, any leads that I should be following up? Don't forget to drop a like, hit subscribe to see the next installment of Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective. And I will see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, I will see you later.